This is All That Politics, news, debate and opinion from the heart of Westminster. There were, it's fair to say, a few fears amongst British politicians, diplomats and perhaps even royalty about how Donald Trump's state visit might turn out. No doubt, to, to, to Theresa May's relief, he was highly complimentary of her during their joint press conference. But one moment did stand out, causing outrage amongst the public, uh, some Labour MPs and even Conservative leadership candidates. So should the National Health Service be on the table? Look, I think everything with the trade deal is on the table. When, you, when you're dealing in trade, everything's on the table. So NHS or anything else, or a lot, a lot more than that. But everything will be on the table. In his subsequent Piers Morgan interview, the president seemed to row back on those remarks. But the question remains, should the National Health Service be on the table in US-UK trade talks? Joining me to talk about that are Victoria Hewson. She's senior counsel to the International Trade and Competition Unit at the Institute for Economic Affairs. And Dr. Sonia Adesara, who is uh, an NHS doctor and member of Keep Our NHS Public. Now, Victoria Hewson, what, 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 what to you does it mean uh, putting the NHS on the table in US-UK trade talks, and should we be worried about it? Well, that's a great question, and it goes to the root of it, really, is when you talk about things being on the table or off the table, it's kind of just a jargon term that I think seems to have been hijacked, really, by um, people who basically don't want the UK to have a free trade agreement with the United States at all. And so I'd, I'd, I'd actually really like to know Sonia's views as to what she thinks being on the table means, because actually, um, if you look at the trade agreements that the United Kingdom is currently a party to, they include services, they include public procurement, and they include investment, but they very definitely exclude the NHS from all of those things, except for the provision of services like um, IT services and building management services, non-clinical services um, that American Well, so, so do you think it would be a bad thing if America was included on those things that's currently excluded? But it already for? is included in these things because we're both parties to the government procurement agreement in the WTO. So actually, American suppliers are already entitled to bid for non-clinical services and um, the supply of goods like pharmaceuticals and medical devices. And that's a good thing. That means that British people, British NHS patients get better value and better, um, more effective medicines yeah. and medical devices. So, Dr. Dadasara, what are you afraid of? Um, so, I just felt my blood pressure rising again watching that. Um, I started a petition on Wednesday because I was angry seeing the President um, of the United States quite gleefully state how our NHS was up for sale. And seeing our well, Prime Minister, and seeing our Prime Minister, NHS I, if you just sale. let sure. me continue, because I let you speak, um, and our Prime Minister stood next to him saying absolutely nothing, and she has, despite being repeatedly asked, she's refused yeah, to deny. But, 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 but can we NHS... just be specific? What are you yeah. worried about? I mean, the NHS up for sale is a slogan. What specifically yeah. so are you worried I, about? I, I believe healthcare, access to good, decent healthcare, is a human right. It is not a commodity to be sold off and to be profited from. And that's my views. I do not want to live in a, in a, I do not want to work in a healthcare system where, where patient care comes second to profits to share. Well, hang on, but what, what specifically to... would, would be affected with the NHS, mm. which has, I think everyone would, you know, has widespread public support, what mm. would be affected by greater American involvement in your view? So there are lots of things at risk. Um, so number one, I know what the IEA, the organisation you represent, lobbies for an insurance-based healthcare system. Um, and I am fundamentally against that because I do not want to work in a healthcare system where those right. that, so have, that, less that's wealth, one. You, you... that have less wealth are, don't have as good access to those um, to healthcare as those who that are That wouldn't more necessarily be the subject of a trade agreement, though, would it? But um, opening up our NHS, opening it up to the private sector, there's a real risk that our NHS gets, that becomes, moves towards an insurance-based privatised system, which is already happening. We have seen our NHS since 2012, since the Health and Social Care Act, brought in by this coalition government, which has been, I think, quite widespread amongst my colleagues and amongst the think tanks, not yours, but the, the mainstream health think tanks with clear funding, it's been a failure because it has introduced the market, which has fragmented our health care, and it also it has wasted money and it's introduced the private sector. And just, just to um, give you a few examples of what happens when the private sector takes over clinical services, which is what is already happening, but the trade deal would, would, would potentially make it a lot worse. So I'll give you an example. Um, in general practice, Virgin took over a GP practice 
in East London. Um, it, before it took over, that general practice was outstanding by CQC rating. And then when they took over, which always happens, they had, because they need to make money and for, for their shareholders and because they need to profit from the healthcare service, they cut funds, they cut staff, they cut corners. Right. And in two years, that general practice went from being outstanding on CQC to inadequate. Now, who loses out there? Patients lose out. Patients, my patients lose out. And that's why I'm so angry that you are just quite, quite, quite happy to, for our NHS to be put up for sale. OK, all right. Well, lot, a lot there. Well, first of all, I'd like to point out that the counterfactual of um, privately provided healthcare services that sometimes have some problems isn't that the NHS is always perfect in every respect. In fact, the NHS comes at the bottom of most league tables in terms of patient outcomes. Mm -hmm. And we're all aware of, I could cite many stories of horrific scandals but there, there are the already quite a lot of private participation in the health service anyway. There is, and that's a good thing in my view, and it means that it gets better value for taxpayers and better outcomes for yeah. patients. Now, let's be clear, though, that that's all free at the point of delivery. Yeah, but, see, but, I mean, let's take one point. I mean, the American administration is of the view that free trade 